There are numerous ways or pathways to bolster your heart health, each targeting different aspects of cardiovascular function and metabolic health. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ahmed Tergen. I'm your metabolism specialist, a diabetes doctor, and as you know, diabetes has a direct correlation with cardiovascular disease, and diet makes a big difference too. So one of the principal adversaries in this context is systemic inflammation. A condition that significantly elevates the risk of heart disease, right? Especially people with diabetes, they are full of inflammation, even without diabetes at the insulin resistance stage. Well, the ketogenic diet is not the exclusive means to mitigate the inflammation, but it stands out as a potent strategy for those who are able to adhere to these guidelines correctly. Now, by substantially reducing the carbohydrate intake, the keto diet will shift your body's primary energy source from glucose to fats, reducing the blood sugar levels and consequently the inflammation. This adjustment not only diminishes the risk of heart disease, but also enhances your overall blood sugar control, overall well-being, dual, triple benefits. Now, I will explore when properly implemented the ketogenic diet, whether it can serve as an effective tool for improving heart health and diabetes. Now, as I said, inflammation is a key player in the saga of cardiovascular problems that's proven in by a lot of studies. That's one of the reasons actually a lot of doctors will use statins, which is a cholesterol drugs everybody hate, but they are actually work by reducing the inflammation, not necessarily by reducing the cholesterol. Because without inflammation, cholesterol really does not hurt you. So it is a starting pistol for the race towards that atherosclerosis where that what we call pro-inflammatory cytokines are the unwanted cheerleaders boosting the risk of developing cardiovascular disease. And those cytokines primarily come from fatty acids and fat cells that are overly filled in our body. Think of innate immunity as the unsung hero, trying to keep things in check, but when there is too much excessive inflammation, it's like a little tornado can destroy everything and becomes the villain. Sabotaging your endothelial function. Remember, endothelial cells are the lining of your arteries. When they are blood gates open to a bunch of cytokines and inflammation under the endothelial cells, that induces the atherosclerosis, which is the clotting process. Now, the stress, the silent instigator, also pokes the inflammation bear, escalating the risk of cardiovascular disease. It is all about the brain's reaction, increasing activity in certain areas when you're stressed out, surprisingly, can actually predict the heart disease. So if you're a type A personality, we know these people tend to have more heart disease. If you're constantly stressed out, if your blood pressure is high, that actually also increases inflammation in your system. That's why a lot of anxious people or depressed people also feel tired because of the inflammation in their system. Now, of course, aging throws its hat in the ring by bringing low-grade inflammation to the party. That's why a lot of older people, you know, they're not going to feel like in their 20s, your body slowly degrades and inflammation slowly goes up because the autophagy process, cleanup process slows down as we get older. So in essence, managing inflammation is similar to keeping the peace in the complex ecosystem of our bodies where the balance is key to warding of cardiovascular disease. Keep stress in check. Embrace lifestyle that supports the immune balance might just be the secret sauce to a heart healthy life and consider holistic things that can support your immune function there is no medicine out there that will give you a better immune system better immune system comes with better mind and better food and the things that you cannot get in the food you get from high quality supplementation now considering the ketogenic diets knack for knocking out inflammation it is not a big leap to think it might actually do wonders for your heart too. It's not proven 100%, but there's a lot of evidence. Let's break down why it is a heavy weight in the anti-inflammatory arena. Now, number one, it kicks you into ketosis, right? Well, going into keto flips the body into nutritional ketosis, right? So this isn't just about cutting carbs for kicks. 
It is a metabolic makeover that dials down inflammation, potentially giving your heart disease a run for their money. Number two, you can say goodbye to pro-inflammatory simple sugars in this diet. This isn't just a sweet talk, but removing these sugars can directly impact cardiovascular health, putting a dent in heart disease risk. Number three, limiting carbs isn't just a dietary trend, my friend. It has legit anti-inflammatory benefits, especially where heart and metabolic health are concerned. Now, less carbs for your heart. Number four, fatty acid. What is fatty acid? Well, keto diet doesn't just slim down your carb count, right? It boosts your intake of omega-3 fatty acids. So not every fatty acid is good for you, but omega-3 is wonderful. These aren't just any fat, like I said, they are your heart's best friends for anti-inflammation, fighting for your heart, protecting you from cardiovascular disease. Now, diving into the details, science speaks for itself in the studies. I have some links in the description below. It is not just about what you cut out, it is what you bring to the plate that counts. Keep it keto, keep it cool, and keep those heart healthy benefits coming. Now, for those who find the ketogenic diet strict carb restrictions a little bit downing, I would say some people find it unsustainable. The second option could be a better option for some people mediterranean diet emerges as a stellar alternative with compelling benefits for heart health there are more studies on mediterranean diet long-term studies than the keto diet so this is a preference so you know if your neighbor on a mediterranean diet and you're on a keto diet don't become enemies become friends they're both good diets so and I see on YouTube, there's constant fights between you know, keto diet, no keto diet. Not everybody's the same, okay? Not everybody's going to become a Republican. Not everybody's going to be the Democrat. So chill out. This diet, the Mediterranean diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, some whole grains, not a lot, but nuts and seeds, olive oil. It's a less restrictive approach to carbohydrates while emphasizing foods high in monounsaturated fats, and omega-3 fatty acids. Now, unlike the keto diet, the Mediterranean diet does not drastically limit carb intake, although definitely better if you go on a low-carb Mediterranean diet. Unless you're a super high-energy individual running around, exercising every day, highly active job, then yeah, carbs will not bother you, especially if you're not a diabetic. But if you're a diabetic, and you want to go on a Mediterranean diet, I would suggest definitely a low-carb Mediterranean diet, meaning that take everything in a Mediterranean diet and leave the carbs alone mostly. But like I said, it is more generous than the ketogenic diet when it comes to carbohydrates. You can include a variety of fruits and vegetables that ensures a high intake of antioxidants and polyphenols that will be super anti-inflammatory for you. Now, this of course, aligns with the heart-healthy goal of reducing the inflammation, right? Similarly to ketogenic diet, but with a broader palette of foods and nutrients. Additionally, Mediterranean diet encourages moderate consumption of fish and poultry, which further supports cardiovascular health through the intake of omega-3 fatty acids. As you know, they not only lower your blood sugar, but also blood pressure, and of course, reduces the heart risk. Studies consistently showed that the Mediterranean diet is associated with lower rates of heart disease, diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Let me tell you, in Italy, the incidence of diabetes, I would say prevalence, not incidence, prevalence, the, you know, how widespread it is, is 3%. In the United States, it's 13%. In Italy, you know what they eat, but they're active people and they are a Mediterranean diet. So it is a very feasible alternative if you are struggling with the keto diet, if you cannot have a social life with a keto diet, if everybody hates your breath because you're on a keto diet. <laughs> also the reasons to be on Mediterranean diet. 
I'm not, like I said, keto diet works great as well, but not everybody can do it. What are the healthiest foods to eat in a Mediterranean diet, then you will ask, right? Well, like I said, olive oil is a staple. You have to have olive oil. You have to like olive oil. If you don't like the olive oil, you're not in, my friend. You're not accepted in this diet. You're rejected. So, but you have to have olive oil, high quality, cold pressed, good olive oil. It's going to reduce the risk of everything. Now, fatty fish. Again, if you're not a fish person, you might be accepted, but everybody will give a side eye to you. You're like, this guy doesn't eat fish. What kind of Mediterranean guy is this, right? <laughs> so, you know, you can do tuna, you can do trout. You don't have to necessarily do like sardines if you cannot take the smell. Even mackerel, sea bass, cod, right? These are all rich in omega-3 fatty acids. But, you know, any fish is good. If you really like a fish, as long as there's not a lot of mercury in them, and as long as they come from a fresh, natural source. Now, fatty fish is known for their ability to reduce inflammation and, interestingly, decrease the risk of rhythm problems and clotting in the heart. Now, what else? You gotta like nuts and seeds. Almonds, walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds. They not only provide healthy fats, but they're also good sources of protein, fiber, antioxidants, and they collectively support your heart health. Now, of course, we have legumes, beans, lentils, chickpeas. When you put some olive oil on them, these plant-based proteins are excellent, rich in fiber and minerals. Of course, some people will say, oh, it makes gas in me, or I cannot tolerate them, or it spikes my blood sugar, etc., etc. I think this happens to people who have no tolerance to carbs whatsoever, which means they're in deep trouble, or they just don't know how to cook it or how to eat it. Because if you do what you're doing, it should not be a problem. Fruits and vegetables, as long as you're not going for a big portions and high sugar fruits, again, fruits and vegetables will contribute high levels of antioxidants, fiber and vitamins. For example, berries, leafy greens, tomatoes in particular are great for cardiovascular benefits. I'm not talking about the ketchup, don't get me wrong. I'm talking about real tomatoes. So incorporating these foods into your daily meals will align with that Mediterranean diet's principles, which offers a delicious and diverse way to support your heart health. Like I said, for a lot of people, very low calorie ketogenic Mediterranean diet is probably the best for most diabetics. Some people call that ketogenic Mediterranean diet. Still a rich selection of foods that marry the health benefits of both diets, but focusing on heart health, inflammation reduction, and overall well-being. So you basically take everything in the Mediterranean diet and just leave alone the carbs. Now primary protein sources, again remember, fish, like sea bass, mullet, swordfish, sea bass, mackerel, cod, even dogfish, cuttlefish, octopus, my favorite, and some chicken, turkey, even rabbit, if you like it. But these choices are not only high in omega-3 fatty acids, but crucial for reducing the inflammation and improving the heart health, but also in lean protein, supporting your muscle maintenance and your overall metabolic health. Vegetables play a starring role in this diet, so you cannot get away from that. No limitations on leafy greens and other low-carb options such as broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, cucumber. That's going to ensure a high intake of fiber and vitamins and minerals. All vital for maintaining bodily functions and reducing the risk of heart disease and many other diseases. Now, a pertinent aspect of this diet is restricted consumption of higher-carb vegetables. So, you cannot really go more than 200 grams of certain vegetables like eggplants and stuff like that but this restriction helps to maintain the ketosis which is a metabolic state key to achieve the ketogenic state in summary the battle against cardiovascular disease and the quest for improved heart health can be significantly influenced by your dietary choices both are good ketogenic diet mediterranean diet ketogenic mediterranean diet they're all good stuff. You try and you decide what works for you. If you'd never tried, you wouldn't know. But do it right, do it correctly, and write us the comments. What do you think about it? You know, 
let us know your experiences in a nice way. And you know, give a thumbs up, of course. Share this video. Why not, right? Subscribe. Let's be friends. Let's be a family. Remember to visit SugarMDs.com. Remember to check out our app. Check out our free books. They're real books. They're not like a tiny booklets. We have good books on our website that tells you a lot about diabetic diet and many things that you never heard of about diabetes itself. Check it out at SugarMDs.com and I'll see you there. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.